Every time I see Spike Lee's 1992 film Malcolm X, I'm amazed at its ambitious scope and its intimate psychological details. The film took 10 years to make and the battles Lee fought to finance it are legendary. I want to use this mini lecture to discuss one thing only about the film though. The choice Lee made to begin the film with footage of the police beating Rodney King in 1991 and to end it with Nelson Mandela in South Africa. The film runs for almost three hours and a half and skillfully covers Malcolm's evolution from gangster to world important leader. But as he is with all his films, Lee is determined to pack in just a little bit more. By beginning with police brutality in America and ending with the collapse of apartheid in South Africa, Lee squeezes in one more lesson. One in this case about the way national histories are always bound up with international ones and how the global political arena is a necessary stage for the domestic affairs of a nation state. This was a lesson Mal Malcolm X understood very well as he looked to Pan-Africanism and decolonization for inspiration for civil rights. You're not an American. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Let me give you a little history by way of an Al Jazeera documentary. World War II was a turning point in terms of the relationship between all the colonized people of Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and Europe because World War II destroyed systematically the invincibility of the Europeans. They suddenly um, found that this white people who back home in Nigeria, they had sometimes deified, you know, they basically lived completely unequal unequal existences um, and suddenly they found in, in places like Burma that they were just as human as anyone else. Uh, they were brave, they were cowards, uh, they did everything any human being did. And, and when they went back to Africa, my father's generation, quite a few of them became really politicized and um, took part in the struggle that ultimately culminated in independence. Africans were about to get a global platform for their struggle. With the war's end in 1945, the world powers pledged never again in the form of the United Nations. The new UN Charter explicitly promised self-sovereignty with a committee dedicated to hear the grievances of colonized peoples. The European, being in the position of power, had one yardstick. He didn't use anybody else's yardstick. His yardstick was the yardstick. But what has happened, and most Europeans don't realize it, time has changed. And as the people in Africa and Asia get some power of their own, they get a mind of their own. The European yardstick now isn't necessarily the yardstick. At the same time, the presence of the United Nations, the rise of the civil rights movement in the United States, and the nascent anti-apartheid movement focused the lens of world scrutiny on black rights. And Malcolm X was a student of this world history. In this next scene, notice how Spike Lee places Denzel Washington in front of a storefront world history book outlet and sign underneath that about two million Africans. Even notice Herbert's diamonds and think about the fact that Spike Lee probably thought about the fact that the most lucrative diamond mines were in Africa. Because if I was an American, the problem that confronts our people today wouldn't even exist. That's right. well, now we ain't Americans, huh? So I have to stand here today as what I was when I was born, a black man. Malcolm X was inspired by the Pan-African movement that developed as many countries in Africa threw off colonial domination. He traveled to meet with leaders like Patrice Lumumba. His experience over there fueled his fight here in America. That was the early 1960s. In the early 1990s, 30 years after Malcolm's assassination, Lee reminds us that the disregard for black Americans' rights continues, even as a final holdout of colonialism in Africa, South African apartheid, is finally defeated. He begins his movie with the burning of the American flag and footage from Rodney King's beating in Los Angeles. And he ends his movie with Nelson Mandela. As Brother Malcolm said, 
we declare our right on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be given the rights of a human being, to be respected as a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intended to bring into existence. By any means necessary. I'm going to pay homage to Spike Lee with this video lecture by ending with some, like he does, ending with some original footage of Malcolm X. And then, also like he does in many of his films, including Black Klansman, I'm going to end with a, a, the entire lecture with a clip from the present day to show how the same sets of issues that were concerning Malcolm X that sent him to the UN to testify in the 1960s continue in 2020. Of other dark-skinned uh, people who were being oppressed the world over in, in that struggle. And the difference now uh, in the direction that the uh, struggle is taking, from that, from the direction that the struggle has been going in in the past, there are many uh, of our people who are thinking more deeply and more broadly and are beginning to see the importance of lifting it uh, out of the national context or out of the domestic context or beyond the jurisdiction of the United States government. And the only way this can be done is by internationalizing the problem and, and putting it uh, at a level where it can be taken into the United Nations and then all of the other independent nations on this earth can involve themselves in our struggle and support us. And uh, the only way by this, of which this can be done, instead of it being called civil rights in the future, we're going to have to label it a human rights struggle or the struggle for human rights. And as such, we can then take it into the United Nations uh, through the avenues that have been set up by the United Nations uh, Commission on Human Rights. Uh, we can take the, our problem before the United Nations in the same uh, manner that the problem of South Africa, Angola, Mozambique, Hungary, the Arab refugee problem, it, it becomes a world problem. The officers show no mercy, no humanity, and tortured my brother to death in the middle of the street in Minneapolis and with the crowd of witnesses watched and begging them to stop showing us black people the same lesson yet again. Black lives do not matter in the United States of America. None of the police officers were fired for murdering my brother until masses of people in the United States and around the world protested the injustice. The sad truth is that the case is not unique. The way you saw my brother tortured and murdered on camera is the way black people are treated by police in America. You watched my brother die. That could have been me. I am my brother's keeper. You in the United Nations are your brothers and sisters keepers in America, and you have the power to help us get justice for my brother George Floyd.